Hey guys, welcome to this lecture. My name is Iman and in this video I'm going to explain one of my MATLAB functions called LHS General. Uh, basically, I'm going to talk about the algorithm behind this function and also I will show you two examples on how to use it in MATLAB. First, let me explain what this function does and why it's useful. The function can generate different realizations of dependent random variables with any probability distribution shape using Latin hypercube sampling. If you don't know what Latin hypercube sampling is, please watch my tutorials on random sampling before continuing this video. I have five short tutorials on random sampling and you can master the topic in less than half an hour. Let me repeat the main objective. The mission for my function is to generate different realizations of dependent random variables with any probability distribution function using Latin hypercube sampling. It might sound complicated, but in fact it's very easy, just bear with me. You can easily generate independent random variables using MATLAB. If you want to add dependency between variables, as long as the probability distribution functions are all in the same family, i.e. the shape is the same, for example normal distribution, the task is easy and everyone is happy. Now the challenge starts when you want to generate dependent random variables with different probability distribution functions. On top of that, when you add Latin hypercube sampling to this issue, it's getting even more challenging and complicated. Basically, my function is trying to address this big challenge with an easy approach. Now that you understand the problem, I want to explain the algorithm behind the function using a simple example. Let's say we want to generate four realizations of two dependent random variables, one with triangular distribution and one with normal distribution. Each realization is basically a random sample drawn by Latin hypercube sampling approach. The first step is to create a Latin square. We have a square space as there are two variables, x1 and x2. We want to generate four samples for each variable. So based on my tutorials on Latin hypercube sampling, we need four stratifications for each variable. Let's say this is our Latin square. Then we need to apply inverse cumulative distribution function of a normal variable with zero mean and a standard deviation of one in order to map each sample to a value. Again, inverse cumulative distribution function of a normal variable with zero mean and a standard deviation of one. The generated values have normal distributions. At this stage, we have independent normal variables. In fact, x1 and x2 don't know each other. In the next step, we need to add dependency between variables. To do so, I use Koleski transformation. By applying this transformation to our variables, we end up with two dependent normal variables. From statistics, we know by applying the normal cumulative distribution function to a normal random variable, we get a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. So let's apply normal cumulative distribution function to x1 and x2. We get two uniform random variables. This transformation preserves the dependency between variables. The last step is to map the uniform distribution to the ones defined by the user. To do so, I'm going to use the inversion method. Let me write this method here. Applying the inverse cumulative distribution function of any distribution, let's say f, to a random variable with uniform distribution between 0 and 1, results in a random variable whose distribution is exactly f. Let me repeat it again. Applying the inverse cumulative distribution function of any distribution, let's say f, to a random variable with uniform shape results in a random variable whose distribution is exactly f. So by applying the inversion method, we get two random variables with triangular and normal distribution. Again, this method preserves the dependency between variables. That's it. Let me recap all the steps. First, generate Latin hypercube samples. Then map the samples to values using inverse cumulative distribution function of a normal variable with zero mean and a standard deviation of one. By doing that, we generate independent normal variables. Then by applying Koleski transformation, we can add dependency between variables. Next, by applying the normal cumulative distribution function to the normal variables, 
we transform them to the random variables with uniform distribution. Finally, we use the inversion method to transform uniform variables to the new random variables with the specified probability distribution function. Now let me show you how to use this function in MATLAB. The function is available on MATLAB file exchange and you can download it from the link I provided under this video. Let me open it. Basically, there are three inputs, probability distributions, correlation matrix, and number of samples or realizations. The output is correlated samples. Let's look at the first example. There are two random variables. The first one is normal with zero mean and a standard deviation of 20. The second random variable has triangular probability distribution. This is lower limit, peak location, and upper limit. Here is the correlation matrix and I want to generate 100,000 realizations. Let's run it and see the results. First of all, this is the predefined correlation matrix and this is the actual one from the generated samples. If you compare them element-wise, they are very close. Now let's look at the histogram of the first variable. As you can see, it has a normal distribution. And here is the histogram of the second variable which is very close to the triangular distribution. Also, let's plot one variable versus the other one. This negative slope is because of the negative correlation between the variables. Second example. In this case, there are three random variables, triangular, normal, and uniform. Here is the correlation matrix, and again, we want to generate 100,000 real realizations. Let's see the results. Again, this is the predefined correlation matrix, and this is the actual one from the generated samples. If you compare them element-wise, you can see they are very close. Now let's look at the histograms. This is for the first variable with triangular distribution. This is for the normal variable. And this is for the third variable with uniform shape. Finally, let's plot them versus each other. Here is what we get. As there are three random variables, the relation is three-dimensional. Okay, that's all I want to say in this video. Thanks a lot for giving me your time and watching this tutorial. Please rate my function on MATLAB file exchange and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.